Hey lovely freaks and welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host Amanda. And I'm Hannah. And if you're new here, hi, welcome. If you like things strange and unusual and true and crying, you can go ahead and hit that subscribe or follow button. You can also head down to the description box. And you'll see a link that will take you to our link tree, and you can find our social media like Instagram, Twitter, and all that jazz. And all that jazz. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, hello. Um, happy Thanksgiving. Yes. Well, it's well, going to be Thanksgiving tomorrow for us, but yeah. then for them, it'll be Friday. Say, it's going to be Black Friday. Yeah. yeah. That's what they're going to be doing. I don't do that. Nope. Um, <laughs> don't want to die, thanks. No, I just don't, I don't like the shopping like that. Um, I've done that a few times, but it's really not worth it, in my opinion. Unless you need something specific, like a TV that's like, you know, 40, 50% off or something like that. But anywho, um, I can't think of anything we need to talk about, so we're just going to jump into today's case. Um, we... This is going to be a two-parter, so obviously if you see the title, you see that it says part one. So we're going to be talking today about the Menendez brothers. I don't know if you know much about this. I think I have heard the case, but it's been a hot minute, Yeah. so I don't really remember. Um, Obviously, the Menendez brothers, like this case is pretty popular. Um, This happened back in uh, the... I think it was 89. So, it was a pretty big deal back then. Um, So, if you know about it, you know, maybe we'll uncover some things you didn't know. So, let's, let's, let's see. So, are they twins? No. No, they're not twins. Okay, so, Lyle Menendez, um, he was the older brother. He was born January 10th. 1968 and then there's Eric who was born three years later on November 27th 1970 so they're three years apart they were they were born in New Jersey their parents were uh, Jose and Kitty Menendez I love that name yeah, I don't know why her, her actual name is like uh, Mary something but uh, her nickname was Kitty so that's what everybody called her so yeah, this case is pretty famous. It took place on August 20th in 1989. So that's like a couple of weeks before I was born, which is weird to think about. Uh, the one reason I believe the media was so drawn to this case was because that the boys didn't live a hard life. There wasn't much, like, there's going to be abuse that's brought up in this. But as far as the media was concerned, nobody knew that right away. You know what I mean? Mm. These were like, this was a rich family. I mean, their dad was really, really rich. So they came from, and looking in on this family, you would think, well, why did these kids do this? Because, yeah, they you know. they seem very privileged. They see, yeah, very privileged. Um, so they came from, the, uh, this takes place in Beverly Hills. I just wanted to say that as well. But we're going to start with Jose, and we're going to talk about their dad. So Jose, the dad, immigrated to America in 1960 from Cuba when Fidel Castro was coming into power. He was born 1944, the youngest of three kids, and his family was kind of middle class. Um, his parents played sports. They were, like, really famous for playing sports. I believe his dad played soccer in Cuba or football. Football. Um, and they left Cuba because uh, Mm -hmm. Fidel Castro was coming in power and they didn't want to be there anymore. So they moved to Pennsylvania where Jose was, um, he started attending high school. He then became like a star athlete in his high school and he got a four-year scholarship to Southern Illinois University. When he was a freshman, he met um, a senior named Mary Anderson whose nickname was Kitty. So she was a senior and he was a freshman when oh. they met. So she's older than him, but still she was like a cougar. Yeah. <laughs> um so after she graduated, they moved to New York where he finished school and then Jose found work in the film industry in New Jersey. And eventually he became a studio executive at a place called Live Entertainment. 
Uh, this is where he makes, like, most all of his money and he becomes, like, super wealthy. A lot of people said that he was very aggressive about getting his way and making it, like, to the top, making it big time. Over the years, he ended up getting the reputation of someone who ruled with, an, like, an iron fist. When he was murdered, though, um, like, at the time of the murders, he was actually, mm-hmm. he was the chief executive of the entire... Of the entire company, and he was worth about fifteen million dollars. Okay. Um, so he became the chief executive of this uh, entertain. <coughs> excuse me. Entertainment company, this studio type company. So now let's talk about Kitty. She was born in a little suburb in Chicago. In uh, she was the youngest of four. Her father left her mother when she was little to marry his uh, mistress. After her father left, he he was also abusive. Um, He wasn't a very good guy. She pretty much hated him. But after he left and he, like, never came back, really, she ended up, she was like a very depressed kid is what everybody said. Everybody said she was really depressed all the time and sad. She had very little friends as well. She eventually cut off all contact with her father. And now we know that she and Jose married in college or married after college, but started dating in college. Neither of their families, however, wanted them to get married. Jose's family was not happy with the fact that Kitty came from a divorced um, family. Mm -hmm. And then Kitty's parents were not okay with the fact that Jose was Cuban. So, it was just a lot of bad stuff from the start. After they get married, they start to have the boys, Lyle and Eric. And Kitty had to just, she made the decision to be a stay-at-home mom. So, she was staying home with them. On the outside, Kitty was making people think that she was like the perfect mom. And she was actually struggling really hard with depression. Mm -hmm. Um, Actually, in the marriage... At some point, she found uh, out that Jose was he, was, he was becoming like this big time businessman and all that. And he was having a lot of affairs, like a lot. So she actually tried to commit suicide in 1987. Mm. Um, she took like a lot of sleeping pills, but I'm yeah. looking at pictures. She's really pretty. Mm-hmm. So Lyle and Eric, let's talk about them. They grew up in... They look so... They literally look like twins. Yeah, they do. They do look a lot alike for being three years apart. Yeah. But Lyle and Erica grew up in Princeton, New Jersey. In school, they were average when it came to their grades. They played sports. But as brothers, they were very close. Eric thought that Lyle, like, hung the moon. It was his big brother. He was, like, the coolest. He could do nothing wrong, you know? Yeah. Which is odd because... He isn't that much older than him. It's not like like me and you. I mean, I'm not saying you think I'm awesome, but like we're 10 years apart. So I'm yeah. definitely older than you. So I would be someone to look up to in that aspect of old, older, olderness. Older siblings. I don't know. Yeah. But they're only three years apart. So I don't know. It's just weird. Uh, now growing up, the father, Jose, was very strict. He was controlling with his kids and his wife. People would say that Jose was never satisfied with anything um, when it came to the kids. He drove the boys to sp- to sports, to do sports, like to play sports. Um, Did they play tennis? Yes. I was just about yeah. to say they eventually decided to pick tennis and they kept, like they decided to play tennis and that was going to be their thing. Yeah. Although they were very good at it, their dad... Um, yeah, because I remember what, TikTok saying, like, he was super strict about, like, mm-hmm. their tennis and everything. Everyone said that he would never seem satisfied no matter how much they worked. So, they were really good at it, but he was never, like, I, I guess he wanted him to be Olympic tennis. I mean, I don't even know. I don't watch tennis. What's it called? Wimbledon? Yeah. I guess he wanted him to go to Wimbledon. I don't know. So, <laughs> the Menendez brothers were not <coughs> without issues growing up, obviously. One article I read said that they that in 1982, the brothers had a cousin over, and they were playing with the cousin. It was a female cousin. They started wrestling with her, you know, just playing around and being goofy. And then, all of a sudden, they started taking off her clothes, and they tied her up. 
When she started crying, they realized something was wrong and they decided to let her go. They were 11 and 14 at this time. So old enough to know that that's not right. But then the reason why I bring this up is because it might, it'll come into play later. Probably in episode two. But um, the reason why, you know, because we know now that if kids are very sexual at a young age, odds are there's something that's yeah. possibly being done to them or something that they've seen that they, they shouldn't or something like that. Something. Mm-hmm. And their hormones and everything, they shouldn't be feeling that way just yet. Well, I mean, the 14-year-old could, but he shouldn't have... Oh, the 14. I he thought shouldn't you have, said four. 11 and 14. He shouldn't have thought that it was okay to tie up his cousin yeah, that <laughs> and take her clothes off. There's another story where Lyle, um, the oldest one, he's accused of touching his cousin in odd ways. Um, and yes, it's true, but like, to be honest, with kids that are younger, that are touching, like I said, it's just it's, it's it can mean other things. Yeah. At 14, Lyle is still wetting the bed also, and he has insomnia. So that's another that's super red flag, red flag at yeah. 14. So unfortunately, even with their dad being very hard on them, the mother Kitty was not much help at all. They, the reason why is because she kind of, she wouldn't really stand up to her husband because he was basically a bully. Mm-hmm. I don't know if, I could never find out anything like if he was physically abusive, like punching her and stuff like that. Physically, uh, is he just uh, mentally abusive? Yeah. Okay. And you know, just just an ass, like would scream and throw things and stuff like that. You know, so she never wanted to like get in between them. Mm -hmm. In 1985, the family moves to California, but Lyle decides that he's going to stay and go to college. Lyle falls in love with a girl at this community college that he goes to and they start dating and then they decide they're going to get that they want to get married they're going to open up this restaurant business well his parents do not like this idea and they force him to actually break up with the girl it was more or less the dad than it was the mom they don't even allow him they don't want him to open up this restaurant and obviously the only reason he would be able to open up the restaurant because of his dad. He was going to get the loan oh, from his dad. Loan. But still, but I mean, his dad wouldn't let him do that. Like he wanted him to do something better with his life. He was actually also pissed off that he was at a community college. Like he wanted him to go to like a pristine college. In nineteen eighty, smartest thing to do because it's cheaper. Exactly. But whatever. <laughs> yeah, whatever. In nineteen eighty seven, he attended Princeton and isn't there long before he is accused of plagiarism and then he gets suspended for a year which as you can imagine jose the dad was pretty pissed about this he makes lyle come to california and start working at his record business lyle hates it and basically starts like showing up late showing his ass trying to get fired Mm -hmm. his dad is not the boss there but he's obviously over all this all these different branches in this company yeah so, the person that's the boss there fires him. Like, he's got to fire him because he can't let him get away with it just because he's the executive son. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, keep in mind that this is all near 1989 when the murders take place. So, there's a lot of tension in the family already um, before the murders, you know, even happen. And now Eric, the younger one, is said to have lived kind of like in his brother's shadow. Eric was said to have never really been a happy kid. He was Mm -hmm. very close to his mother. And he was a sensitive, shy kid. Um, He never was able to please his father, though. And it seems like neither one of them were, really. Well, if his mom has depression, it could run in the family. Maybe Mm -hmm. he has it, too. Yeah. So Eric graduated from Beverly Hills High School in 1988. He wanted to attend college out of state but his dad was refusing to pay for that for him to go however jose did not want him to do um not want him to not go to college so obviously his dad he's like paying for his school because i guess they didn't really make the grades to go and i don't know why i guess they didn't get tennis scholarships so Mm. whatever if they're good enough, they could have done that. 
Yeah. It seemed like they were good enough. Yeah. So now we've made it to 1988, a year before the murders, before um, their parents are murdered. This is when Lyle and Eric start to rob their friends' houses in the neighborhood. Don't know why they decided to do that. Yeah, I was like, okay. They have all the money they could ever want, but yeah, that's what whatever. I was thinking, why? Okay. They would break into homes and steal jewelry, money, um, you know, TVs, etc. Maybe just for a thrill. I guess. Eric eventually gets pulled over by the police in Calabasas and he, uh, for driving, like a driving violation or whatever, and they start searching his car and all that, and they realize that there's a bunch of stolen items in his trunk. Now, Jose comes to his rescue, and, like, he hires, like, the best lawyer, you know, hotshot lawyer, and he wants to make sure that the boys do not get any time in jail, because you gotta think, he is, like, a big shot executive record producer guy, or not record producer, but he owns the record company, and he doesn't want his kids to be, like, labeled as these delinquent, you know, bad children. So, the deal that they made is that Eric needs to plead guilty because he is the youngest and he'll get juvenile charges. And in turn, they will drop all the charges on Lyle. And that's what they did. Eric was sentenced to community service and both the brothers had to see a counselor. They had to see like a therapist and Mm -hmm. that'll come into play later as well. So, Jose then pays back all the victims... The sto- which I thought was really nice of him. He pays back all the victims all the money for the oh. stolen, you know, items. And I'm surprised they put him in therapy. Yeah, that was one of the requirements for the judge that they had to have counseling. Yeah, but I was thinking I'm surprised that the parents were okay with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because usually they're like, no, they don't have to get a therapy. Especially if they they're were fine. scared, like, that they were going to say, especially Jose, I'd be scared, like, oh... Please don't tell them I'm an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> well, whatever. Um, unfortunately, I believe they should have served a little bit of time because maybe it would have shown them that doesn't matter how much money you have, you can't get away with it. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think they should have served time for sure. I say more. I said a little bit, but I meant more than that. Because yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I thought it was nice of him to pay back the money. But you know, to the people that lost all their yeah, items. But, but they're going to think, Daddy will fix everything. Exactly, yeah. Now, it's after this that Eric starts to write screenplays. The screenplay is about a teenager who murders his parents and gets all the money after his parents die. And they become he becomes, like, extremely wealthy. Hmm. Eric then shows the screenplay to Lyle. And Lyle said, man, we should do this for real. After this... Um, is when they start to plan out how they're going to kill their parents. Now, about a month before the murders, Kitty, the mom, goes and sees the therapist. And she tells the therapist that she thinks that Eric and Lyle are psychopaths and narcissists because she's scared of them. Mm-hmm. She said that she was so scared that she started to lock the bedroom door at night. She would also lock her... She would also lock the door... Like, if she was home alone or anything like that, she would yeah. lock the front door, and they didn't have a key. She wouldn't allow them to have a key. If you have to lock the door because you're scared of your own kids, that's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> How some... old are they now? How old are they now? Uh, are they, like, 18? 19, 20? Yeah. Yeah, somewhere, somewhere in there. Somewhere in there. <laughs> so, at some point, it's also set... Like, I don't even really know why they're still living in the house but whatever at some point it's also said that jose and kitty told the boys that they needed to like get their act together they were fisting to cut them off completely and this was like right before the murders happened they were going to cut them off they weren't going to give them any more money because they're Mm -hmm. just basically living off mom and dad at this point they're not doing anything with their lives okay they got to be like 20 if that's happening yeah yeah i'm trying to think um I don't know. Math. They were born in 68 and 70. And it's 1989. So do the math. Probably about 20. Um. So yeah. They they told him like. We're going to cut you off. You know. We can't continue to support you guys. Mm -hmm. Yada yada. So that brings us to August 19th. The day before the murders. The family actually took like a shark fishing trip. 
And after, after it's really odd. I'm not laughing. I'm, I'm just thinking about like I there's so much that, tur- no. turmoil. Like why the fuck would I want to go fishing with you? But whatever. After this, uh, after the murders, they found out from the f- the crew that was on this fishing trip. They said mm-hmm. that it was really odd because the mother would like stay down below deck. The dad was like on the other side of the boat fishing, and the boys were like off doing whatever they wanted to do. So it wasn't really like a family friendly yeah. awesome good time like they weren't together at all that makes no sense because they just had a fight about getting kicked out cutting them off and then they're like all right let's go to a fishing trip and yeah. you're like what yeah it's, but, all right. it's really weird so so now we come to august night uh august 20th the day of the murders jose and kitty were watching a movie that night the maid had the night off and that night, Eric and Lyle also were out on the town. They told their parents they were, like, going out to party or whatever. Around 10 o'clock, a teenage girl who lived down the street said that she saw a car pull up to the house. She saw two men get out. And inside, uh, g- two men get out. <laughs> Hold on. Two men were in the inside the car. Mm-hmm. One of them got out, okay. walked towards the house, and the other one went to the trunk of the car and got something out of it and then walked towards the house. Now, I need to say that this is not just a house. This is a mansion, obviously. I mean, this is like a $4 million home. So, you know, this is... They have like a study and they have all these different doors that they can go into. They had a very intense security system as well. And the security system was cut off. And they had a gate at the front that was secure and only the people that knew the code or whatever could get in and mm-hmm. they were able to get in. So obviously we know, I mean, we know this, they're kids. It's not that big, you know, but so Eric and Lyle come into the home through the study. They walk down the hall where they see their parents watching a movie. Jose is asleep on the couch and Kitty's kind of falling in and out of sleep, laying in his lap. One of the brothers takes a 12 gauge shotgun and starts shooting multiple rounds um, just at the couch and anywhere he can shoot. He hits different places in Jose, and then he walks up to him, sticks the 12 gauge shotgun directly behind on his back of his head, and pulls the trigger. This blows the back of Jose's head completely off. Kitty wakes up during all the shooting, obviously, and quickly realizes that she's also covered in Jose's blood. She takes off running and is shot in the right leg and the arm. She then goes down, but she is still trying to like crawl and get away. Mm-hmm and try to survive and then she shot again after she is down on the ground they start unloading into their mother this at close range with this shotgun Mm -hmm. unfortunately she's still alive after being shot in the chest lungs arms and legs kitty is still trying to crawl away and the brothers have to run outside get more ammo out of the back of the car and that's what they do so, Eric and Lyle come back out after they reload. They come back with the shotguns and they start shooting again. Then they go back. Um, they then shoot her ten times. Four of these were in the head at point blank range. After both parents die, they then decide to make it look kind of like a robbery. Robbery. That's what I was thinking they were going to do. And they also want to make it look like a mob hit. Well, so, putting ten shots in their head is going to be a bad idea because that's going to be a well. I mean, this is shotgun. Fashion. Also, I mean, you. I mean, a shotgun at close range yeah, is going to make it. Yeah, no. it's going to really look bad. That is um, not a good idea. They should have just killed her once, and that was it. Cause it's yeah, be because passion. what they do to make it look like a mob hit also is to uh, shoot the left knee. I guess that's something that the mob okay. does. But I'm sitting there thinking, you've just obliterated their heads. And their body. So I'm pretty sure that Police left officers. knee shot is yeah. not going to be something they're going to be, like, be like, oh, hmm. there it is. <laughs> Whatever. It's they're the stupid. knees, guys. Everyone calm down. Yeah. You know what it is. <laughs> they're stupid. Uh, they then pick up all the shell casings and they leave the house. Lyle then calls 911 around 11 o'clock <laughs> at night mm-hmm. and tells the operator that someone has killed his parents. When the police get to the scene... They see Eric and Lyle running out of the house, screaming in terror. They both run past the police. They fall out on the grass. They're, like, on their knees, screaming, you know, freaking out. Eric then 
Which, okay, that might seem believable. But then Eric decides that he's going to start ramming his head into a tree. Like, he's so distraught that he can't even, like, deal with it. I I don't know. And the Um, Emmy Awards goes to? Yeah. This is really weird. So when the police get into the house, they find the horrific scene. The lead detective, his name was Les Zeller. Mm -hmm. is going through the crime scene, and he notices that things are a little off. He realizes nothing had been um, stolen, and there was no sign of forced entry, and he comes to the conclusion that whoever murdered them was obviously very close to them. Yep. Especially the fact that they knew (coughs) the security code. Hold on. <coughs> Excuse me. Especially yeah, the fact they knew the security system code. If they like destroyed the oh man cameras and everything, and then stole a couple of stuff, and made it look like they broke them, into the gate or something, you know, yeah. so violently, then yeah, they, they just, just did it really sloppy and everything. Yeah. Well, it takes a while for the police to arrest them. So hmm. Lyle and Eric are questioned by the police, but at this time they're not considered suspects. They also ask them like. Who do you know that could kill your parents? Does anyone hate your parents? The difference between these two interviews show that Eric is very distraught and Lyle's, like, very calm. He's like, eh, I don't know. And then Eric is over here crying and, like, really trying. Well. Um, you can listen to the interviews online, but obviously I'm not going to put them up here. Now, during this time, also, the police decide to protect Lyle and Eric because they think that whoever might have killed the parents if it's not you know them mm, after and them. if it's somebody they know they're going to come after them so Lyle like so Lyle Eric and Lyle geez said that, that morning they played tennis they said that they watched um, a tennis match on TV then they spent the afternoon at the mall shopping till about 8 p.m. they left and they they left the house to mm-hmm. go see a movie After about 8 p.m. Then they said that they got home, saw smoke coming from the house, which police were like, okay, well, there wasn't any smoke. There wasn't a fire, so that was odd. Um, Lyle then tells police that the mob wanted to kill his parents. So now they're starting with the whole mob thing. Because they were so... um, Because they were still not considered suspects, they didn't do like a shotgun residue test or yeah. gun residue test on their fingers which I think was stupid they should have done that shit right away I don't understand why they waited because I would have been like oh if you got nothing to hide then let me see your hands <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know it was weird and they've done that for a lot less they've done that for like you know uh, husbands who they think might have murdered their wives they're like well let's test your hand your fingerprints and see if there's any gunshot residue you know and i'm just like why didn't they do this but i think it's because they were rich yeah i really do a lot of people think that too so the brothers show up hours um like for the funerals the brothers show up an hour late for the funerals for their parents eric seemed distraught during the funeral but lyle's like showing no kind of emotion he's just like okay you know whatever <laughs> Um, During this time, also, the brothers had went and, like, on a spending spree. They bought cars, watches. They bought, like, new Rolexes for the, specifically for the funerals. They bought new suits and all kinds of shit. Lyle had spent over $9,000 on his credit card. Damn. And Lyle and Eric thought that they were going to get a shit ton of money. From his parents dying. But, joke's on them, they found out that they were only going to get $2 million a piece if their parents died. Yeah. I guess the rest of it was going to go in like a trust or something like that until they got older. Hmm. Which made them very upset and they were not happy about this. Probably because Kitty knew that they were kind of a psychopath and she set that up like Something. That. At this point, the police are running out of options on who could have done this. They are interviewing the shit ton out of like different people one of kitty's best friends come forward and she says that she thinks that the boys did do this Mm -hmm. after realizing that they were spending obscene amounts of money and they were trying um and all they 
all the like Kitty's friends thinking that the boys actually did did this did do this. I can't talk today. They decided they were going to question them again. They found out after looking into the brothers that they hired computer experts to erase all their parents' history from their computers, which is very odd in my opinion because yeah. I'm like, what was on those computers? Um, that what, is odd. Re- what was on those computers? Yeah. <laughs> So, what really drew the attention of the police, though, was all of the money being spent. And Eric seemed to be breaking at this point because he feels like Lyle's kind of, like, spending too much money. And he's putting their head on a chopping block, basically. He even tells Detective Zeller this as well. He also tells his therapist, Dr. Ozel, Ozel, um, he's going to be a very important part of this. He eventually confesses the murders to Dr. Ozel. Eric does. Eric told him that they were scared of what would happen if um, they got cut off. Like, Mm -hmm. if the mom and dad cut them Mm -hmm. off and they were living on the street, basically. And he just tells them everything. The therapist wants Eric to stop so he can, like, call Lyle and be like, hey, come to the office so we can talk about this. And he does. Lyle comes. And when he comes to the office, they tell the doctor after shooting their parents, they drove out to a canyon. They discarded the shotguns over, like, the canyon or whatever. Um, They dumped their bloody clothes into, like, a dumpster somewhere. And the empty shell casings they also dumped into a dumpster at a gas station. They then went home, made the 911 phone call, and that was that. I believe that if they wouldn't have went crazy, like spending money, and Eric wouldn't have cracked under pressure and all that, they probably would have never known who killed, you know, their parents. Yeah. Um, Lyle actually threatens the doctor, and he says that, like, we need to kill him, like, he's gonna tell, which he couldn't because of patient confidentiality. Yeah, like, he can't. However, Dr. Ozell, I can't remember how to say his name. He was actually recording the sessions. So on March 5th, 1990, a woman named Jude. Judy? 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 I don't know. Judy. We're going to call her Judy. A woman named Judy Smith um, comes forward to police and she says that Dr. Oz wanted me, um, asked, asked her to eavesdrop on one of the sessions where the brothers were talking to him. She Mm -hmm. told detectives that she heard the brothers arguing with each other in the office, and then she heard them say, we need to kill this doctor because he knows too much. But Eric kept saying he didn't want to kill anyone else, and he was too afraid to do it. She also told them that Dr. Ozel was um, taping the sessions, and he got all the confessions of the murders on tape. So, March 8th, 1990, they get a search warrant to search for these said tapes, and they find out that he taped over 17 tapes of these confessions and different, like, interviews with them and stuff like that. Lyle was arrested, and Eric turned himself in three days later after coming back from a trip somewhere. I don't know where he was going. But, uh, yeah. And that's where we'll end part one. Oh, that's just part one. (laughs) Yeah. So, more stuff must happen in the trial. Yes, the trial is like a big to-do. Big, big, big to-do. There is accusations of um, his dad inappropriately touching them and doing stuff like that. That's what I've seen on the TikTok. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's so much controversy around whether people believe it or not. It's like whether people believe that his parents really were, you know, crazy or whatever. But, it, I mean, yeah. I don't know. We'll get into all that in part two. I don't want to give too much away. But, um, yeah, the trial was a big to-do. And it was all over everywhere. Now, so, yeah. I don't know about that part. I've heard about the story a little bit. I kind of kept remembering when you kept telling me. Mm-hmm. But the sexual assault and all that other stuff. Uh, I mean, I've heard stories, like, just them saying they that happened on TikTok, but not, like, in detail of what exactly yeah, happened. No. 
So we'll get all we'll get into all that on part two. So part two will be up next week. Um, but hopefully you guys enjoyed part one. Go ahead and if you if this is already out, then you can go ahead and listen to part two right now. Um, but if not, you know, wait till next week. You guys, we don't ever do part one and part two usually because a lot of times. I find it weird that some people will listen to part two before part one. I'm just like, what are you doing with your life? I you don't understand. You have, like, more people listen to part two. I, yeah. Like, okay. I, I don't understand it. But, anywho, um, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube because we have almost hit 100 followers or 100 subscribers on there. And that Yay. is the goal for the end of the year. We want to get to 100. Mm-hmm. Um, we're at 84, 85, somewhere in there. So, go ahead and subscribe. And then, like I said, hopefully by next year we can get, um, or maybe not even next year, maybe once you get done with a semester, we can start video, you know, recording ourselves on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah. And then, you know, go ahead and follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. You can also follow us on Spotify, Apple, wherever in the hell you're listening to this podcast on. Please go ahead and review us because that helps us out as well when you give us reviews. And then we'll know whether or not you guys actually, you know, give a shit about us. <laughs> or like us. <laughs> Maybe you don't. It doesn't matter. Um, all right. They're well, so annoying. Yeah. God, I wish they would just shut up. She needs to do better. <laughs> all right. So, anyways, we hope that you guys have a great, had a great Thanksgiving. Have a great, happy Friday. Uh, Black Friday. Happy Friday. <laughs> and then also Cyber Monday. So, shop, shop, shop. Till you drop. All right. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.